Dave, you served in East Timor, is that right? That's correct, yes. A and the impact has stayed with you. Could you share with us what the impact of serving there was and how you still live with that? OK, um, well, to make it short, I, I have uh, very serious dreams every night, nightmares uh, every night. Um, I'm in full body pain constantly. I always say even my eyelids hurt. Um, yes, just the memories of a few things that happened in there. I was a medic as well mm. when I served there. So I saw a few things and did a few things that yeah, some other people may not have done. Yeah. I, I wonder yeah. how you feel, Dave. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and also uh, probably tried to commit suicide more times than I can count, 30 plus times for it. Alison, what's it been like for you then as a, a wife to, to see this? I mean, it's just, I'm sorry to hear you have to say that, Dave, and I'm, I'm sorry for what you've gone through and particularly in service for, of, of our country. What's it like, Alison, in that situation? You say wife, and if I was just a wife, it'd be good. But I am Dave's carer, counsellor, psychiatrist, psychologist, Doctor, She's my everything. chemist, everything. She's my um, everything. I cut him down when he's hanging from the roof. Mm. I, mm. I perform CPR when he's overdosed. I, I and I've done that many times. Um, and until we got, we got help from the. Veterans Centre in uh, of Australia, and now that's been closed. There's nowhere for us to go. No, there is no inpatient care in Australia for disabled suicide veterans anymore. Alison, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear you have to say that, and there's no words to even respond to what you've had to go through. I'm just wondering what when you talk about no support services, that you don't have yeah. what you need, what's your question, particularly? Because we have a minister here tonight that you can put a question directly to. Yeah. Um, my question is, I'm actually offering you an invitation, Mr Keogh, to be a guest in our home and experience firsthand the, the crisis resulting in your government's neglect of Australian veterans and their families um, by closing the, the Veterans Centre Australia. This is an invitation as a guest. However, it is bring your own food because DVAs and cap payments don't pay for extra mouths other than mine and Dave's. Um I'd like you to, to really... I don't want to, you to send your secretary or your offsider. I'd like you to, to come to our home to experience it firsthand. Matt? Uh, that veteran centre meant everything to a lot of veterans and it saved a lot of veterans' lives, including Dave's. He yes. wouldn't be sitting here now if it wasn't for that centre. And... To you, he might be Joe Blow, but to me, he's my husband who signed up and served for this country and he's everything. Of course. Maybe not to you, but to me, he is. And he deserves better. And so do a lot of other veterans. Oh, Matt? Well, firstly, can I say to uh, Alison and, and to Dave, and Dave, thank you. firstly, thank you for your service. And Alison... Thank you for your service uh, in looking after Dave. And uh, as I said in the Parliament, uh, when responding to the interim report from the Royal Commission into Defence and Veterans Suicide, um, it is really clear that uh, governments, both, both sides, over a long period of time, have dropped the ball in many ways uh, in how we support our veteran community uh, when they're in need. Uh, and some have been uh, you know, very happy with the support that they've received and great work's been done. And I know the staff of DVA are very committed to that, but it doesn't work every time. And we but there's a very clear right. invitation and, made yep. from, from Alison's heart here as well to you to say, um, 
to come and visit, to sit yeah, and down I'm, I'm and I'm happy listen. to get in. I'm happy to, to be in touch with them, and if we can get Alison and uh, details, then we can uh, certainly arrange something there. Um, but I, I think uh, just to go to the, the veteran centre that I was being spoken to about as well, um, it's a really sad circumstance that's arisen there. Um, it was a small centre working uh, in the north shore of uh, Sydney, uh, and uh, it, it, it grew, uh, which was great, but uh, it didn't seem to be able to put together a sort of a sustainable funding model around it. We certainly provided quite a deal of funding, but um, Unfortunately, it came to a circumstance where that board decided to make a decision to close. Uh, but we worked, as in the Department of Veterans Affairs, very closely with them to make sure that all of their existing uh, client base could be uh, uh, connected to other s appropriate services. Well, we have, to we make have sure two people here who are part of that. Yep. Is that what's happened in your case, Alison? Do you believe that you now have the services that you need after that closure? No, no. Dave's last attempt, we waited nine days nine days for a bed to become available in an inpatient care centre. Nine days. I had to tie myself to my husband so he wouldn't have any more attempts on his life at night while we slept. I tied myself to him. Yeah. Um, and, and that reflects a... a... And, and, and also, Mr Keogh, recently you spoke at a public forum and about the crisis and... You, and you said to, to write to the health minister. Um, I, what, what, I, that, what I was speaking about when I was asked about white card access was that I am engaging with the health minister about uh, where veterans are finding a lack of service available to them and I am working with uh, the Department of Health and uh, the health minister around what we need to do for those veterans that are finding difficulty in accessing a doctor that will service them under the white card. Um, but the broader issue you've raised is a really important one, which is the Department of Veterans Affairs funds services. We will connect you to a service, we'll pay for those services, but we don't run hospitals, we don't run inpatient clinics, we don't... That is not something the government does. Uh, it's reliant upon the existence and accessibility of either state systems or mm. private. We will pay for it to go private, but we do have a broader problem across the country where there is a lack of that service. Uh, and uh, that we see that in different parts of the country and especially in regional areas. Um, and that is a huge problem that confronts people when they need help now. And I'm aware of that and I'm really sorry that it's impacted mm. uh, the way that it has. And if we can get uh, your details, I'm very happy to be in touch. So, so as a product of the Vietnam War myself, and I thank you, Alison and David, for sharing your story, I think we've just witnessed the human suffering of wars. Uh, and I think that mm. we can't... Uh, for any government to invest putting money aside to get us prepared to go to war. They must put aside money because there, are, there will be bound to be people like David and his wife and his family who will need that support when they come back here, when you go to war. When you go to war, you see things that you don't, don't want to see and you do things that you don't want to do because war forces you to kill, war forces you to do the, the most horrendous things. So, from my perspective, as, as government put aside this kind of money, unfathomable, unfathomable money, uh, to go and prepare, they need to prepare for the human impact as well of that. We uh, Alison, <laughs> Alison, Dave, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, and, and I don't know if this is even good enough, but the best of luck to you and the love that you have for each other has really shone through tonight. Dave, thank you again for what you've done for our country and thank you again for being able to share that story with us tonight. And hopefully we can see a better outcome. We're going to stay with this and we're going to follow this up as well. And you've had a commitment from the Minister here tonight to follow this with you. Thank you yep. again. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just say as well... Yes, please. please thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's an extraordinary story of when we talk about conflict, to actually see the human cost of that and to see the impact it has is worth keeping in mind, isn't it, when we talk about numbers and submarines and preparing for war. If this discussion is raising any difficulty for you or anyone you know, the numbers for Lifeline and Open Arms are there on your screen. So please <coughs> utilise those if you need.